We're in Matthew chapter 5. We're going to start reading in verse 33. I like this passage because we've had a couple of weeks where we were dealing with things we don't really like to talk about. We talked about emotional adultery. We talked about divorce. Today we get to talk about truth telling. And it's something that hopefully all of us are prone to do. And uh, that lying or uh, not telling the truth is not something that we would ever consider. However, Jesus includes it in the Sermon on the Mount for a reason. So we're going to take a look at some of the things he has to say. Beginning in chapter 5 and verse 33 of Matthew. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it's his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it's the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, because you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. I like the way the King James renders it. Let your yes be yes and your no be be no. Look over at James chapter 5. James chapter 5. This would have been written by Jesus' younger brother. He was a leader in the church at Jerusalem. And as people were persecuted and sent away from Jerusalem, he sent them this letter. And there's a lot of really practical things that James talks about throughout the letter. But he gets down to the closing section. And he begins the section with, above all. So, after all the things that I've told you, here's the most important thing. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear. This is chapter 5, verse 12. Not by heaven, or by earth, or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Record where he got that. Quoting his older brother, things that he heard from his sibling, things that he heard from the Savior, uh, probably after Jesus was already in his ministry, and maybe even after Jesus had been resurrected from the dead. James wasn't a believer when they were growing up. He always thought that Jesus was a little off. Uh, there are a couple of passages in the New Testament where Mary and her sons go looking for Jesus because they think he's lost his mind. And he tells them, I don't need you to save me from myself. I, you know, Who are my mother and my brothers, the ones who hear the words that I say and keep them. Those are my real mothers and brothers. All right, well, let's start at the worst possible end of things and work our way back. Uh, I don't think any of us would fall into this category, at least hopefully not, but there are people who will lie to you outright, just absolutely will tell you things that are not true. Let me tell you this. Any time that you tell a lie, I don't care how big or how small the lie might be, you're speaking the language of the enemy. It is Satan himself who is the father of all lies. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, there's a long list of sins, things that you and I would never think about being involved in. And then at the very end of the list, it says, and all those who tell lies will find their place in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Pretty strong, right? So you see this list of, oh, well, here's all the things that are really bad sins. And then you get down to the end and it says, and all liars will find their place in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. It may not be all those other things, but what if I am one who tells lies? When I was a little boy, I loved to make up stories. Uh, my daddy coined a phrase, I think. I don't know where he might have heard it. But he said you would rather climb a tall tree and tell a lie than stand on the ground and tell the truth. Has, have you heard that from other sources? You have? Okay, so my dad's not as wise as I thought he was. But he, he was convinced that perhaps I liked telling lies. He was correct. Uh, when I was about two years old, I started telling stories about how I lived in Hawaii before I was born. My best friend's name was Joe Wang. I've never met a man in my life named Joe Wang, but evidently, before I was born, we spent time together. Was Hawaii 5-0 already out in 1961? 
Is it that old? I don't know why Hawaii even, but anyway, I would tell my parents all about how I lived in Hawaii before I was born. Uh, I also have to tell you, if I lie to you standing in the foyer, it's a lie. If I lie to you standing in the pulpit, it's an illustration. So keep that in mind <laughs> as we go through. Uh, in John chapter 8, Jesus is talking to those who believed in him, and he has already said if you will know the truth and the truth will make you free, but they go on down through this conversation and as he gets down to the bottom of the conversation, he says, you speak the language of your father, the devil. He is a liar and the father of all lies. It's serious stuff that we tell the truth. The second level is not quite as bad as the first, but it's, it's a level that makes us tell the truth by contract. Right? I will tell you the truth, but you're going to have to make me tell you the truth. You're going to have to uh, back me into a corner and get me into a contract to make me tell you the truth or keep my word. It was a common demand for doing business among the Jews in Jesus' day. They assumed that the person with whom they were doing business was going to lie to them. They wanted to make sure that their best interests were kept on the table, and so they would always make them promise, they would always make them take an oath of some kind before they went into business. Now in our culture, we have things that are kind of similar, not exactly the same. We have signatures, right? When was the last time you did business where you didn't have to sign anything? Right? Large sums of money are, you know, you better sign on the dotted line. We did, I don't remember what the contract was. I do remember that there were about 20 pages and there were just signatures everywhere. Little, those little post-it notes, arrows, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here. You have to have a lawyer to know what you're signing. Why is that? Because some people lie. Because some people will enter into a contract and then renege on the contract. So we make people sign on the dotted line. Uh, we want... Uh, down payments. We want earnest money. We want people to prove in advance that the things that they're telling us are true and that they'll keep their word. Well, in the Jewish culture, they used various oaths to make sure that people would do what they said they were going to do. It usually involved precious things that the people involved in making the promise could not control. Things like the temple or the gold inside the temple, or the hair on top of their head, or heaven, or Jerusalem. They would make oaths based on things that they personally could not control. Uh, different oaths held different levels of surety. So if I told you that I swear by the hair of my own head, that was one level of surety. But if I swore by the hair on my mother's head, it's a different level of surety. If I swore on my grave, that's one level of surety. If I swore on my mother's grave, that's a different level of surety. How many different levels of surety have you had to, to use in your life? Anybody ever say, do you swear to God? Right. Do you uh, swear on your mother's grave? Do you swear? Uh, what do you just swear? Uh, what was the one I put? I put it in the bulletin. I remembered it the other day. Um, Cross my heart and hope to die. Stick a needle in my eye. That was one that we used as a kid. Right? We've had all these levels that we use. Well, the Jews did too. Look at Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. And before we even get there, I want to, to point something out to you. This is addressed at the same group of people that Jesus has been telling his disciples that they must be better. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 23, beginning in verse 13. Matthew 23, 13. Woe to you, you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not go in, nor will you let those enter who are trying to do so. Woe to you, teachers of the law, Pharisees, you hypocrites. You travel over land and sea to win a single convert.
And when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. Woe to you, blind guides. You say, if anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing. But anyone who swears by the gold of the temple is bound by that oath. You blind fools. Which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? You say, if anyone swears by the altar, it means nothing. But anyone who swears by the gift on the altar is bound by that oath. You blind men. Which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? Therefore, anyone who swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. Anyone who swears by the temple swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. Anyone who swears by heaven swears by God's throne and by the one who sits on it. And so Jesus just lumps it all together. He says, look, if you're, if you're going to take oaths, every oath is kind of equal in its substance in that you must be people who are honest. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Anything beyond that comes from the evil one. Uh, I have a good friend. I haven't seen him in years, but his name is Radon Jackson. And if you've never run across Ray Don, you would enjoy Ray Don and his wife, Mary. He was the district attorney for Woods County, Oklahoma for quite a number of years. Uh, he was in Woodward, uh, and uh, his office in Woodward County. But he was a man with a great deal of wisdom. He served on the Bible chair board for a number of years, and that's how I got to know him. And I was getting ready to preach on this particular subject, and I said, you know, in law, if you're, you're called as a witness, they want you to swear. And they want you to put your hand on a Bible to do it. How can you as an elder, how can you as a Christian put those things together? Is that a difficulty for you? And he said that most judges that he knew were willing to take an alternate answer to the question that was asked. In other words, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? so help you God, can be termed as, I will tell you the truth. And he said, most judges with whom he worked would allow that, but I promise to tell you the truth. The reason that they have you put your hand on a Bible in a court of law, the reason that they ask you for an oath uh, in a court of law, is to prevent perjury, right? Uh, people would lie. People do lie in courts of law, even after they've taken these oaths. But the reason they ask you for this is because they don't know you. When Jesus is talking about oath taking, and he says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. There are some times that we don't know the people with whom we're doing business. There are some times that the person with whom we're having the conversation doesn't have any idea whether we're a truthful person or not. And so we sign papers and we give earnest money and we do the things that you do to be involved in business, but Jesus says, be a person that is so truthful that your reputation among the people at least that know you is that you would never tell them why. That if it comes out of your mouth, it's going to be the truth. Now sometimes that's easy. Sometimes the truth is easy. Sometimes the truth is complimentary to ourselves and to the people around us. We can say nice things about ourselves and it's true and we can find nice things to say about other people and it's true and everybody's happy but what happens when they ask us a question we don't want to answer? What happens when they ask us a question that doesn't make us look good? What happens when they ask us a question about somebody that we care about but the answer true answer isn't what they want to hear or wouldn't be very complimentary then do we tell the truth or do we hedge do we take the end around to try to avoid people having a bad opinion of us or a bad opinion of the people about whom we're speaking Jesus says let your yes be yes let your no be no a simple yes, a simple no should be enough so that they always know that when you tell them something, it's 100% true. Why does he say that? Because he wants us to be better than the scribes and the Pharisees. They were saying,
satisfied with just taking oaths, with trying to trick each other, with taking one oath that meant, well, I might keep my word and I might not, or taking another oath that meant, well, yeah, I probably will. Just say yes. Just say no. And follow it up so well that no one would ever begin to believe that you would lie to them. How good your reputation? How good's my reputation? It's an important thing as a Christian for a lot of reasons. But we have a message that we're trying to share with people. And that message is of utmost importance. Not just for now. It's a message that has importance for eternity. It's a message that's heaven or hell, life or death. How they view us and how they view the things that we tell them makes a difference. Because if we are trying to tell them the ultimate truth and we can't even deal with the lesser truths in an honest way, then what does that do to our witness? What does that do to our opportunity to tell them the things that they need to know? Is my trustworthiness, is my truthfulness <clears throat> clearly evident in my lifestyle, in everything I do, and in everything I say? It's important to the Christian to say yes and to mean it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for giving us such a great mission. We thank you for letting us know about our Savior, about his will for our lives. We thank you for our salvation in him. And we thank you for the opportunity to share that with other people. Father, we pray that as we go through our lives that we'll be known as a people of truth, that we love your truth, and that we're dedicated to telling the truth to anyone who wants to know. Father, give us a voice to speak about the hope that's in us. Help us to give truthful answers about menial things. Give us chances, give us opportunities, and help us do well. It's in Jesus that we pray.